Hello all, I'm here to help those who just started studying quantum mechanics in school. So in the beginning, we start learning about the square shape infinite potential well mathematically. So this is like creating walls with high amount of voltage, such that electron is trapped in between. But is this some kind of physical wall? Why do we have to learn about this concept in quantum mechanics? Some of you might have somewhat understood the math from school already, like they all make sense. And professors or people on YouTube often mention a mass attached to a spring that's oscillating back and forth. Why all of a sudden they are talking about this oscillation? Why? Why are we learning this in quantum mechanics? It all starts from here. We have an atom. So there's a nucleus at the center, colored in green, and an electron is orbiting around it. By the way, I know a lot of students are misunderstanding this part. You know how it requires certain energy for an electron to go to the next orbit? Let's just say it needs 100 joules of kinetic energy to go from the first orbit to the next orbit, okay? And let's say we have some kind of tool to provide energy to the electron. If we provide just 10 joules of energy, the electron will just stay in the same orbit. I mean, 10 joules is something, at least one-tenth of the amount needed, so shouldn't it at least move up by one-tenth of it, at least? That's the point. Unless we exactly provide 100 joules of energy to the electron, the electron won't do anything. That means, even if we provide 99 joules of energy to the electron, it still will not move. It needs exactly 100 joules or more to make the transition. To those who have already studied quantum mechanics a bit, I know you're gonna say that it does sometimes move with lower energy at low probability, but let's not go there for now. I'm here explaining for the new learners. No need to know about that for now. Anyway, new learners, I'm gonna again assume that the required energy for the next orbit is 70 joules. I'm just making it up. This means, if we provide like 169 joules to the electron, it will only make it to the second orbit, not the third orbit. Do you get the idea? This is happening all because electrons prefer to absorb only certain amount of energies for transitions. Electrons are forbidden to be somewhere in the middle no matter what. Somewhere in the middle, I mean the places between the orbits. But wait, what if when they're traveling to reach the next orbit, say the electron is making a transition now, and we could be like, stop there. Isn't the electron in between the orbits at that moment at least? You said the electrons are forbidden to exist in there no matter what. Exactly. They're forbidden to exist in there even when they're moving to the next orbit. But how can they even get to the next orbit then? They teleport. Yes, what you have learned until now from high school was actually a very cool phenomenon. Anyway, let's see why the spring motion is mentioned when learning about this. Some people relate this to molecular vibrations or such. Nah, well that's one. But I would say it's more from the electron orbit. Think about this circular motion. What is this kinetic energy? Half mv square, right? But as this is a circular motion, let's express it in terms of angular velocity omega instead of the velocity v. By the way, if you guys didn't know, angular velocity and angular frequency are the same thing. You can call it either way. So, our energy could be expressed as half m omega squared r squared. So far so good. And now, here is the moment of truth. Angular velocity is also known as square root of k over m, right? When you learned about oscillations. By replacing omega with that, we get this. Didn't you notice anything? Now, watch this. If I say that this orbit is on the xy plane, and by looking from the side, 
This is the movement in terms of only the x position, right? And what is this? All of a sudden, this expression looks just like the spring energy expression. And in fact, it does look like the spring motion. And also, the electron seems to keep bouncing off each end as if there's some kind of wall on each end. You now see where I'm trying to get, eh? As we are now seeing the motion in the x direction, let's try to plot it by changing the orbit. So for the first orbit, where n is equal to 1, we can place this red circular path at low energy level. For the second orbit, where n is equal to 2, we can put the yellow circular path, which should be 100 joules above the red orbit. You remember, we set it as 100 joules before, so that's going to be the y value difference. And then the third one should be up here, with a longer radius. Let's think about this. This looks like a quadratic function. And that makes sense. E was equal to 1 half kx squared, right? So it should be a quadratic function. This is called quadratic potential well. As this quadratic potential well is a little bit complicated case, we could first consider a simplified version, which is the square potential well. This is why you're learning about this infinite potential well in the beginning. 